Assalamu alaikum. Our lecture today will be about the renal calculi. Uh, it is a common finding. The objective of this lecture is to list the type of the renal calculi according to their composition. And also we will discuss the different metabolic uh, abnormality that favor the formation of the renal calculi. Then we will list the investigation that must be done in any patient with renal calculi, especially if the renal calculi is recurrent. Renal calculi or renal stone are usually composed of the product of metabolism that is present in the normal glomerular filtrate. So, why this stone is formed? First of all, and the most important, is when we have the concentration of certain constituent or a metabolite is high in the glomerular filtrate when it is increased of any of the uh, metabolite that form the stone when it's present in high concentration in the glomerular filtrate, this favor stone formation. And why this happen? Why the, this present in high concentration? Because when we have low urinary volume, even when we have normal renal function, because when we have restricted fluid intake or there is excessive fluid loss, over a long period of time, this will uh, favor the formation of most type of the stone. Especially if other factor that favor stone formation is found. The other cause of high urine concentration of one of the uh, metabolites that form the stone or the constituent is the high rate of the excretion of this product that will form the stone. For example, the calcium. This occur either due to the high plasma level of this uh, constituent, for example, uh, hypercalcemia, or due to impairment of the new, uh, normal tubular reabsorption of uh, this from the glomerular filtrate. For example, impaired absorption of calcium lead to supersaturation by it, and then it will favor the precipitation and stone formation. The other factor that favor stone formation is the change in the pH of urine, and this change usually occur secondary to bacterial infection. The bacteria contain certain enzyme, and it will act on certain analyte and change the pH of the urine. When this occurs, it will favor the precipitation of different salts at different hydrogen ion concentration. The other factor that favors stone formation is the urine stagnation. When there is stagnation to the flow of the urine, secondary either to obstruction to the flow for whatever the cause, for example, the presence of uh, prostate enlargement that uh, cause obstruction to the urinary outflow, or when we have structural abnormality, certain uh, stenosis, or whatever other uh, structural abnormality, it will lead to stagnation of the urine, the contact period between the uh, urine with its metabolite and the kidney will increase and this favor the formation of the stone. The other factor that favor the uh, formation of the stone is the absence of or decrease in the level of inhibitor. The, uh, normally, the urine contain inhibitor. Example is the citrate, the pyrophosphate, the glycoprotein. Uh, this inhibit the formation of the stone. For example, the pyrophosphate inhibit the growth of calcium phosphate stone and the glycoprotein inhibit the formation of the uh, calcium oxalate. So when this substance decrease, then the formation of the stone will increase. Citrate is a low 
urinary, uh, when there is low urinary citrate excretion, the protective uh, role of citrate will be uh, removed and uh, citrate generally, it will decrease the urinary supersaturation by calcium salt. How citrate will form soluble complex with calcium ion and inhibit the formation of the uh, crystal and the aggregation of these substances to form the stone. So because of the protective effect of citrate, even they are given it uh, in clinical practice to increase the urinary citrate and reduce the uh, urine stone formation. So the, when the urine became supersaturated uh, by any substance, it will become the, uh, the urine solvent contain more solute than it can hold in the solution, and this will lead to formation of crystals. This is acidic crystals, the beginning of the uh, stone. Then uh, the process called nucleation, and later on it will enlarge and became a stone. And this is pH dependent. So the volume of the glomerular filtrate or the urine is very important. When it's decreased, the stone formation will increase. The pH is very important. It must be maintained within the normal uh, pH, normal range. Otherwise, it will uh, any increase or decrease will favor stone formation. The presence of citrate, citrate uh, must be present in a good quantity, normal quantity, because it have a normal uh, inhibitory role for stone formation, inhibit stone formation. And uh, urinary tract infection by the bacteria also will change the pH and favor stone formation. Many type of renal calculi are found according to their composition. The uh, most common type is the calcium containing stone, which are either calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate. Also, we have the uric acid stone or what is called urate stone, the cysteine stone, the xanthine stone, the strobite stone, and we have uh, certain other type which are rare for example the complex or mixture stone xanthine stone dihydroxy adenine or endinvar store in addition we have an artifact stone that is composed of fibrin or a clot the first type and the most common type of cal cal calculi renal calculi are the calcium containing salt uh, they are the uh, commonest type. It forms about 80% of all of the renal calculi. The formation of this stone, usually we have hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria. And its precipitation, usually uh, favored by the presence of high concentration of calcium in the glomerular filtrate and in the urine. Whether the calcium uh, stone formed is calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate depends on two factors, depend on the urinary pH and it depends on whether the concentration of oxalate is high or low. If we found that the patient, the stone of this patient is calcium containing, we must measure the plasma calcium level in this patient. Why? because hypercalcemia is associated with hypercalciuria. Increase in the blood level of calcium lead to increase in the level of calcium in the urine and favor the formation of this stone. So this stone may be the underlying manifestation that may, may, uh, may, be, uh, may be due to another disease that is manifested as a renal stone, calcium containing renal stone. Even if we found that the plasma, calcium, and phosphate are normal, um, they may be repeated on a regular interval, so, so uh, they may be underlying hyperparathyroidism. So many causes of uh, hypercalcemia that may lead to hypercalciuria uh, must be checked for. 
For example, uh, one of the cause of hypercalcemia is the primary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism. Uh, this can be checked by the level of calcium and phosphate. Other causes when the patient have uh, cancer, especially when there is bone metastasis, then this will manifest it as hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria. And uh, if there is a high bone turnover, for example, in case of hyperthyroidism, in case of that causes, and in case of an increase in the level of vitamin D to a toxic level, also there will be a high level of calcium, and then there will be hypercalciuria, certain medication, for example, certain type of Diuretic, the thiazide diuretic will reduce the renal calcium excretion, so uh, maybe uh, precipitate stone formation, and other factors. Uh, sometimes uh, certain endocrine rarely may cause uh, acromegaly and adrenal insufficiency, may be associated with hypercalcemia, and this will lead to hypercalciuria and precipitation of calcium containing renal calculite. Sometimes there will be hypercalciuria without a hypercalcemia or not very related as, the, as a concentration. This occurs in case of osteoporosis. This will lead to increase the release of calcium from the bone. In case of chronic acidosis also, in which the ionization of calcium from the bone is increased. And this will lead to hypercalcemia. And in case of distal renal superacidosis, also there will be a hypercalcemia. What is the uh, limit to detect hypercalcemia if the calcium in the urine, the daily excretion, is more than 6.2 millimole per day? And uh, in, the, in the female and in the male, more than 7.5 millimole in the uh, per day, this can be diagnosed as hypercalciuria. A hyperoxaluria, well, uh, if it is found in a large uh, quantity, the oxalate concentration in the urine, it will favor the formation of calcium oxalate stone. And the source of uh, oxalate, either we have uh, exogenous from the diet, and the diet that is rich will be in oxalate, is the chocolate, the beetroot, the spinach, the tea, and the nut. All these will be rich in oxalate and favor the formation of calcium oxalate, especially if, are, uh, if the patient have other factor that favor the formation of uh, uh, renal calculi, for example, uh, low urine volume or change in the uh, pH or when there is any abnormality in the uh, urinary structure or in the, if there is obstruction or decrease in the uh, normal inhibitor. And uh, sometimes the source of oxalate is not from the diet. Uh, there will be an uh, inborn error of metabolism of the oxalate characterized by hyperoxaluria, high concentration of oxalate in the urine. It is primary disorder, and we suspect it if we found the renal calculi are uh, recurrent, especially in children. What are the things that will, we must uh, avoid in these patients with calcium containing uh, calculi, renal calculi? We, uh, it's preferable to treat the primary condition uh, if there is infection or if there is hypercalcemia, we look for the cause of hypercalcemia, and if it is treatable, then we uh, must treat it. And if it is not uh, 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 not uh, possible the treatment, then uh, we advise the patient to decrease the intake of the calcium, the food intake of calcium and oxalate to decrease the uh, prevalence of the or the recurrence, uh, recurrence of the uh, calcium containing renal stone and also one of the very important advice is to maintain high fluid intake uh, unless there is glomerular filtrate it must be uh, calculated with caution and uh, uh, also a certain type of diuretic for example the thiazide diuretic will reduce the 
calcium excretion. Calcium phosphate, we say that the calcium containing stone, either we have the calcium phosphate or calcium oxalate, they differ in their uh, appearance. The calcium phosphate from a Stockholm calculate and the site is usually in the renal pelvis, while the calcium oxalate are smaller and white uh, and they are found inside the ureter. They are formed in the ureter, while the calcium phosphate usually in the renal pelvis. Generally, they are radio-opaque and the, the uh, calcium containing stone are usually radio-opaque. That, that means that can be seen in a normal uh, or ordinary x-ray, the KUB, and they are usually hard and white. The pH that favor the formation of calcium phosphate is the alkaline pH. The second type of the stone, the renal calculi, is the strobite stone, or it is called magnesium ammonium phosphate stone. The calcium containing stone form about 10% of the renal calculi, while these stone will form about 10% of the renal calculi. It is associated usually with urinary tract infection, which is chronic infection by a certain organism or bacteria that uh, contain a specific enzyme, which is urease containing enzyme, urease containing bacteria contain the enzyme, urease, this urease will split urea to ammonia and bicarbonate, result in an alkaline pH, which is greater than seven. And this, at this, uh, at this pH, the stone formation that uh, composed of magnesium ammonium phosphate is favored. The other uh, or the third type of renal calculi is the uric acid containing uh, calculi. It will form about 8% of the total renal calculi and may be associated with increase in the level of blood uric acid with or without a clinical gout. And uh, it uh, favor the precipitation in an acidic pH. So, in the treatment of this stone, one of the advice is to uh, urine alkalinization to uh, the decrease the formation or, or the precipitation of the uric acid uh, and uh, <coughs> formation of the uh, stone. And uh, fluid intake is also advised in this case to decrease the concentration of the uric acid, the supersaturation by it, and uh, usually to diagnose or differentiate this stone from other type of renal calculi. Usually the uric acid stone is a small, uh, yellowish brown in color, and it is a friable, but if it is very large, sometimes it will form uh, staghorn calculi in the renal pelvis, but generally it is a small, friable, and yellowish or brown. Uh, it cannot be visualized by an uh, X-ray, the KUB, it needs uh, ultrasound or by pilogram. The 16 stone are uh, rare because the calcium is about calcium containing stone about 80%, the uric acid stone about 50%, and the strobite is 10%. So the remaining type of stone are rarity and uh, Usually, this occurs in case of inborn error of metabolism of the cysteine that lead to supersaturation of it and increase in the uh, urine saturation by cysteine because of cysteine urea. And the patient will and later on have a renal calculi that's composed mainly of cysteine and it is more, alka more soluble in alkaline. It's precipitated in acidic pH. Xanthine and uh, in Denver stone also are rare and usually associated with inborn error of xanthine metabolism and in Denver stone with certain medication that contain a protease inhibitor uh, in Denver and in, uh, usually in patient with, uh, hum with a human immune deficiency virus infection.
other rare stone are the dihydroxyadenine stone and the stone that uh, contain a mucoproteinous material and uh, well precipitated in case there is a chronic infection, chronic urinary tract infection, and when there is certain type of bacteria that change the pH. Uh, this is summary of the type and the risk factor for renal calculi formation. Uh, the most common is the calcium stone. We will see that the decrease in the uh, urine volume will enhance the formation of the stone by supersaturation of the fluid by the constituent that are normally present in the urine, for example, the calcium, the phosphate, and the oxalate. Increase in the oxalate whether dietary cause or uh, due to inborn error of metabolism or in case of hyperoxaluria, increase in the calcium hypercalcemia for whatever the cause, it will lead to hypercalcemia and sometimes there is hypercalcemia even if the calcium level is normal and we say that the calcium may increase in case of para hyperparathyroidism, primary and tertiary, in case of a tumor born with bone metastasis. Uh, for example, also in multiple myeloma, uh, there will be hypercalcemia. In case uh, acidosis increase the calcium level, and uh, uh, sometimes there will be normal calcium, but there, is, there will be hypercalciuria. Uh, increase in the pH will favor the formation of the calcium containing stone. All these above the factor will lead to increase in the calcium oxalate, increase in the calcium phosphate, supersaturation of the fluids, either decrease in the fluid. Uh, or the increase, uh, the uh, increase in the concentration of the constituent that is normally found in it. Other factor that favor calcium stone formation is decrease in the citrate because it is a normal inhibitor for calcium stone. So if it decrease, uh, there will be a crystallization is enhanced. Decrease in the magnesium also will lead to enhancement of the uh, stone formation and uh, decrease in the inhibitor generally. Increase in uric acid and the increase in the promoter for stone formation will increase in the crystallization, crystallization and formation of the uh, nucleation and then it will grow and form uh, a stone. Other risk factor for stone formation is the type that uh, the uric acid stone which is formed when uh, there is decrease in the pH. In case of acidic urine, favor the formation of the uric uh, formation of the uh, stone uh, urine with the uh, uh, favor the formation of the uric acid stone. And in case when there is hyperuricemia, with or without a clinical gout, when there is decrease in the volume, also it is a common feature for every common finding in or common factor in every type of stone. When there is decrease in the uh, glomerular filtrate volume, it will lead to supersaturation of the urine by the constituent for in this case it will lead to uric acid supersaturation. The uh, cysteine st stone due to increase in the level of cysteine whether uh, usually it is in case of inborn, inborn error of metabolism and lead to cysteine supersaturation. Other rare type of stone is characterized by increase in the metabolites uh, that uh, lead to formation that are the main constituent of the stone. For example, increase in the xanthine lead to formation of xanthine stone. Uh, uh, increase in the endenvar lead to formation of endenvar stone. Endenvar stone. Infection stone is favored uh, by the increase in the pH by the bacteria that contain certain enzyme will split a certain uh, metabolite and lead to a formation of an alkaline pH. Ammonium and ion when increase also will lead to uh, favor the formation of infection stone and increase in the muco substance. What are the investigation that is required to diagnose the cause of renal stone? If the stone is uh, found and available, then we send it to a lab for analysis, we can know the type of the uh, stone, the chemical composition, it will be very valuable uh, because we can know whether it is calcium stone, uric acid stone, or other type of uric, uh, of other type of the stone. Also, we will take blood sample for measurement of the calcium, the phosphate, the uric acid, urea and electrolyte, the PTH, the parathyroid hormone. We will uh, test the urine 
for a protein, for a blood glucose, for the most important, for the amino acid. And also, we can collect the urine for 24 hours a time during collection, and we measure another analyte in it. How can we start the investigation? Uh, first of all, we will uh, measure the blood calcium level and the urine for calcium. And uh, if uh, first uh, we check for the blood calcium, if it is high, then we will check for the cause of this hypercalcemia, whether it may be due to para, uh, hyperparathyroidism, primary or tertiary, or it may be due to uh, vitamin D toxicity. Sometimes there may be a hidden malignancy with bone metastasis. Uh, sometimes it may be due to um, uh, acidosis, also may lead to hypercalcemia. And uh, also we exclude the cause of a hyperuricemia. Uh, if there is increase in the level of uric acid, also we will look for the cause uh, and we will look for if there is a associated clinical gout. Then we will uh, collect a 24-hour urine and we measure the urine volume. Maybe one of the major causes is found in this patient, with, which is the low urine volume, and uh, it will precipitate and lead to supersaturation of other constituents, even if it, is, if it is found in normal concentration. Also, we can measure the urine calcium in the uh, sample. We will find whether and we check if there is hypercalciuria, we will measure the urine for oxalate, sometimes the supersaturation uh, of the urine by oxalate and oxalate urea will lead to formation of the stone. And uh, if all these tests, they are negative, we ask for the family history of renal calculi and uh, we will look for the inborn error of metabolism that may favor the formation of certain stone. And also, we will screen the stone for cysteine uh, that may lead to cystinuria. So first of all, we exclude the common cause the, and the easiest way to measure the blood calcium, blood uric acid, and we measure the urine for 24 hours, collect it and measure the volume of the urine within the 24 hour. We measure the urine calcium and the urine oxalate level. Then, uh, if the qualitative test is positive for any of these, then uh, then we uh, collect the 24 hour uh, to measure the cysteine, the amount of the cysteine, the quantity, and also the basic amino acid should be estimated. So after in the previous slide, we measure the uh, qualitatively the presence of cysteine in the urea. If it is uh, positive and more than the normal, then we uh, collect the urine for 24 hour for quantitative uh, estimation of the amount of the cysteine. Also, we measure before this, uh, before, uh, uh, this we can measure uh, if the urine is infected. We can do the by general urine uh, exam. We look for the presence of certain type of bacteria, for the presence of the pus, and any other marker that indicates uh, the presence of bacteria, urine tract infection, especially if it is chronic. And also, we can do urine culture to diagnose the presence of bacteria, which is a major cause for change in the pH that favor the formation of renal calculi. If the uh, if the uh, urine sample is alkaline and uh, the urine is not infected, there is no evidence of urinary tract infection by uh, by uh, culture and by a simple examination. Uh, then we think that the patient may have a metabolic acidosis, and uh, we will check for the presence of renal tubular acidosis and we think of this diagnosis. If the pH is more than 7, it is basic and alkaline, then uh, we think of the urinary tract infection may be the cause of the renal calculi. And uh, in this case, we have the proteus vulgaris and uh, uh, it is associated with the uh, strobite calculi, the triple calculi is associated with the urinary tract infection by proteus vulgaris by the uh, uh, presence of the urea splitting enzyme. And we have the uh, uh, midstream urine uh, for uh, infection. This is the best sample. We discard the first uh, part of the urine and then we collect the midstream for checking for the bacteria. 
and uh, the presence of the infection. And in case the plasma urea, urate is low and the, the xanthine concentration in the urine is high, then we think that the patient may have xanthine urea and we look for the inborn error of metabolism in this case. Citrate is a normal inhibitor of stone formation and uh, if there is a deficiency of the citrate, a stone will be formed. So it is important to check the level of uh, citrate in the urine and uh, this can be easily treatment by giving him clinically uh, in clinical uh, base we give him a substitute for the citrate as part of the treatment of the renal calculi and if we do all these previous investigation and the cause is unknown then we uh, will consider the rare cause for example the dihydroxyadenine stone and uh, in Denver stone and other technique that can help in the diagnosis of the renal stone is the imaging technique, which is the out of the uh, scope of the biochemistry. Uh, we will send him for the uh, radiology for imaging technique. For example, maybe there is abnormality in the structure of the urinary tract or there is obstruction. This can be visualized by the ultrasound or the IV pilogram. So we will measure the chemical composition of, uh, of the stone. We do a stone analysis if it is available. Then we will do the blood checking for many analytes that are the constituent of the stone. For example, the blood calcium, blood phosphate, uric acid, urea and electrolyte, and par, uh, para, uh, thyroid hormone. And we check the urine for the pH for the dipstick test for the protein, for the glucose, amino acid. And then if it is recurrent stone, then we will think of 24-hour urine collection for measuring these analyte, other analyte that may be the cause of the renal stone. This is example of a case in, uh, of, uh, in which the patient have renal calculi. He have a family history of renal calculi. We will uh, check for the plasma sodium is within the normal range. The potassium is also normal. Urea is within the normal range and creatinine. Uh, also, it indicates that the patient uh, doesn't have renal impairment or glomerular impairment and the GFR is more than 90 and this is uh, normal. Uh, the adjusted calcium is within the normal range, so we don't have hypercalcemia. The phosphate is also normal. The bicarbonate is normal, so he don't have acidosis. The uric acid is within the normal range, so normal calcium, normal, which is the, uh, uh, so we exclude hypercalcemia, we exclude hyperphosphatemia, we exclude acidosis in this example, we exclude uh, hyperuricemia, and the acid-base balance is normal, we don't have acidosis. The urine excretion of the calcium and ox oxalate in this sample was within the normal range, and the abnormality that is found in this uh, patient after excluding of this common cause of renal stone was a high concentration of cysteine uh, was detected in the urine and he was considered as a cause of uh, cysteine stone secondary to cysteine urea and uh, he uh, is have a family history he has a family history and at a rel relatively young age, this is suggestive that the, there is an inborn error of metabolism of cysteine that will lead to this condition. Thank you.